even patients, when questioned strenuously, say they are not symptomatic. In patients like that, who have a lot of calcium on their aortic valve and have a high velocity across their aortic valve, they may be in danger. So those kind of patients probably should not be monitored. They should probably be evaluated by a cardiologist and then a surgeon for aortic valve replacement. Because the other important fact is that their aortic stenosis will progress and the day will come that they need the valve replaced anyway. The question is timing and timing it so that the patient remains completely safe. All healthcare providers should maintain a highly aggressive posture toward treating by valve replacement aortic stenosis. I think that only completely asymptomatic patients and patients with very benign echocardiograms should be left to be, to be monitored or followed with regular office visits. Pharmacologic therapy for aortic stenosis, um, plain and simple, as of uh, the year 2008, just does not work. Um, aortic stenosis needs to be treated by valve replacement therapy. Uh, historically, patients have been asked to choose between um, biologic valves or valves uh, created from tissue, uh, usually from pigs or cows, uh, and between uh, the biologic valve and mechanical valves, which are made from uh, metal alloys uh, and uh, fashioned to function like a human valve. Uh, as far as aortic stenosis goes, uh, again, uh, that's a valve that needs to be replaced. It's a very uh, difficult valve uh, to repair, so the patient will be faced with that choice between a, a bioprosthetic valve or a biologic valve or tissue valve, we call it, and a mechanical valve. As far as candidacy for aortic valve surgery, um, the surgery can be performed with excellent results, uh, even up to the age of 90. I think in, in talking about the potential of needing a procedure of any kind, the discussion should always be quite simple. It should be looking down each direction at the proverbial fork in the road in the person's life and looking at the risks and the benefits and weighing them in each hand. Almost the simplest discussion to have is in the setting of aortic stenosis, which is symptomatic, because the path of not doing anything is so deadly. That's a big downside. It's a big risk. Um, in the other direction, yes, there's always risk to have surgery. But uh, the risk to have an aortic valve replacement uh, nowadays is, is very low. Um, and in comparison to the risk of not doing anything, it makes the choice very simple. Um, well, the armamentarium for replacing a aortic valve uh, these days is, uh, of course, the standard way that's been done for many years, which is uh, um, surgical aortic valve replacement. Uh, what is new is that that can be accomplished through uh, uh, several minimally invasive or smaller incisions, which do probably create less trauma to the patient and speed their recovery. Uh, these, these procedures can be done with the same good outcomes as a standard incision through the breastbone. Um, furthermore, uh, you know, technology has advanced and uh, there are new uh, ways of deploying an aortic valve with a balloon um, uh, in a, with using a transcatheter technique. That is, uh, a valve can be passed from the femoral artery in the groin or through the apex of the heart. Uh, using a wire technique, much like the wire technique that's used to perform an angioplasty on the coronary arteries in the heart. And uh, the valve can be positioned uh, inside the, the blocked valve, and the balloon is blown up, and the, the valve is uh, opened and placed into that uh, area where a normal valve goes, thereby replacing the aortic valve. In the preliminary results uh, around the world, this, uh, this technique appears to be working and improving, and uh, at uh, the current time may be a, a very reasonable option for elderly patients with multiple medical problems who may, may be at higher risk for surgery. In, in summary, uh, speaking uh, as a surgeon who sees the end result, uh, what I would hope for in uh, the, the perfect world 
is just to uh, breed awareness. Aortic stenosis is one of those things in medicine that we actually have a fix for, and that's uh, incredibly gratifying. So all it really means is uh, just uh, asking the right questions to check on the patient's functional status and cardiopulmonary physiology uh, workings, uh, listening for the murmur of aortic stenosis, which is um, easy to hear, and then not being afraid to send them forward for evaluation, which could lend lead them to surgery because the surgery is highly successful and now is done with very little risk.